Now, all three DA-led coalitions and Gauteng municipalities have managed to pass the adjustment budget on time. But on the other hand, the ANC-led coalitions Siniteguini, Nelson Mandela Bay, Buffalo City and Mangawung were marred by corruption, violence and murder. Now, these are just some of the assessments of the Third Republic, which is a non-profit organization focused on democratic participation and community development. So what does this mean? Does this mean that DA-led coalitions are doing better than the ANC ones? To discuss these even further, we're joined by the Third Republic Director, Paul Berkowitz. Paul, thank you for your time and good morning to you. What exactly is this report then telling us about DA-led coalitions versus your ANC-led coalitions? Good morning to many. So in general, our Metro Monitor project is a... It's a way for um, an average South African who wants to keep up with what's going on in the eight metro municipalities to have a summarized report at their fingertips. What we've done, our research team, is to look at all the news reports and all the research in the first four months of uh, the new local government dispensation. So that's November last year to February this year, and to see what major events and trends have, have taken place. Oh. And as you said, quoting from our report, the ANC-led metros, the four of them, have had a lot of trouble. And the DA-led coalitions in Gauteng have held it together. Now, that's not, in the latter case, that's not just because of the DA. Mm. The DA has had more experience in coalition governments. They've had, uh, they ran a very complicated one in the city of Cape Town from 2007 onwards. And they've had experience from 2016 uh, of coalition governments in Gauteng and Nelson Mandela Bay. Mm. But it's also to do with uh, compromise within the coalition with other coalition partners. It's also to do with the other coalition partners and other parties within the opposition uh, providing accountability and checks and balances within the coalition. So what we've seen is, for example, uh, those Gauteng coalitions that the seats on the mayoral committees are divided amongst the parties and there's give and take. Yeah. And there's compromise when it, it's come to the adjustment budgets. But we haven't seen that in the ANC-led coalitions. And I think a fair summary is not that it's just the, ANC, the DA that's responsible for the success in the opposition-led coalitions, mm -hmm. but it is the ANC's responsibility for the failure of local government where it is in charge. I, I want to ask you this, Paul. Are there incidents of clear sabotage in these coalitions in as far as municipalities are concerned uh, because, and I'll tell you why, we had a conversation with uh, Herman Mashaba just this week. He's the former mayor of the city of Johannesburg and he said there was sabotage against him to collapse his government by some of his coalition partners, particularly the ANC. Uh, that obviously comes to the detriment of, you know, the municipality and the residents, etc. And hence there isn't sufficient service delivery. Now, when it comes to coalition do we see that there's focus placed on one trying to collapse the other's government as opposed to making sure that a municipality is functional? Tubela, what, again, what we've seen in Gauteng is there have been tensions. There have been cases where the risks have increased dramatically. For example, in Swane, at the end of February, just as the adjustment budget was being passed, there was uh, a fairly substantial argument between the DA and Action SA about the allocation of funds, particularly to disaster hit areas in Mamelodi and Hamanskrop. Now, that was ultimately resolved, a compromise was reached, and the adjustment budget was passed. So there isn't strong evidence that within those coalitions with the DA, Action SA, Freedom Front Plus and so on, that there's internal sabotage. We mm -hmm. have seen ANC and EFF councillors in Johannesburg, in Swana and in Kuruleni try to disrupt council meetings, trying to collapse them. Uh, ANC and EFF councillors have actually been dragged out of some of these meetings that had charges of violence and assault leveled against them. And um, ANC caucuses in Gauteng have appealed to the Gauteng MEC for Cooperative Governance, Mr. Lebochang Maile, to intervene and to take these metros under administration again, the same way that happened to Tswane in 2019 and 2020. So there's attempts from outside the coalition to collapse the governments in the Gauteng metros. And when it comes to metros like Etequini and Nelson Mandela Bay, 
those coalitions led by the ANC ultimately collapsed mm -hmm. because there wasn't enough compromise. In Nelson Mandela Bay, the ANC caucus tried to retain a very compromised uh, municipal manager who's uh, she's under a cloud of corruption. They've tried to reject the SIU report into her and, and the tenders that uh, she oversaw. And that's part of the reason why the ANC's coalition members, uh, coalition partners in Nelson Mandela Bay left the coalition. Yeah. So that might be some internal sabotage, the ANC unwilling or unable to compromise and to clean up the metros where it's in charge. Yeah, well, as you're talking, Paul, that sounds to me like coalitions are hard uh, in, in general. But in your experience, what's the success rate of coalitions in South Africa? And do they indeed serve the people they intended to? Uh, good question, Le Bukhang. If we look historically, if we look uh, from the 2016 coalitions, those were a mixed bag. Uh, Nelson Mandela Bay was incredibly complicated. There were a number of different governments. There was not much stability. And I don't think that the DA-led coalition lasted much longer than two years at the most it, from 2016. In Gauteng, there were issues with um, Herman Mashaba leaving the uh, Johannesburg coalition, stepping down as mayor, and the ANC ultimately taking over. Tswane was taken under administration. It turns out uh, subsequently that that was unlawful. So up until this last year's election, coalitions didn't have a great name. And what we're seeing now, it's still early days. It's We have to be cautious, but I'm, I'm an optimist. So I, I, I'm seeing and I'm looking for signs that the Gauteng coalitions are holding, that things are happening. And for now, the business of local government is taking place in Gauteng metros. Budgets are being passed. Um, there's a diverse mayoral committee in all three. There's even some evidence that behind the scenes, the EFF and some of the opposition parties in the Kuruleni are working together, even though the orders from the top in the DA, for example, forbid any kind of coalition with the EFF. Mm. So, so with that being said, then what would be a favorable or an ideal coalition relationship, a working relationship, uh, do you think? And is, is it even possible? <sighs> I think we're seeing, if the, if the question connected to that, Lebo Khan, is what would make a coalition work, we're seeing signs of what would make a coalition work. There's compromise from the partners. For example, although the DA drove very hard bargains and got uh, most of the powerful portfolios in the mayoral committees in Gauteng, they only hold four of the ten seats in Johannesburg. Uh, Action SA, IFP, Freedom Front Plus, they're all in the mayoral committee as well. One of the, the chair of chairs is a COPE member. The oversight committee chair is from the UDM. So in order to make coalitions work at this stage, I'm not saying it's ideal, but the more parties in the coalition and the, and the more um, transparency between the partners as to what the conditions of any agreement are. That's important. I think that that starting point, the initial coalition between the DA, Action SA, Freedom Front Plus, um, the ACDP and um, COPE, that secured a majority in Tswane. And from there, the coalition built. And those five coalition partners had a very clear mandate. They knew what they'd agreed to amongst themselves. When Herman Mashaba um, placed pressure inside the coalition to include the EFF, the other four partners rejected that. Whether it's right or wrong, or whether the mm -hmm. coalitions would be more stable with the EFF inside, I don't think is the question. It's about building on a strong foundation. And those Gauteng coalitions, the core of them, there are other parties. There's the Patriotic Alliance and the IFP in Johannesburg. But to have a clear set of rules and, and understanding and to have a clear commitment to clean government, that's right. what I'm hoping we're seeing in Gauteng, that all those uh, parties within the coalition are committed to transparency and clean government. And for now, they're holding each other accountable. Ideally, we as South Africans and civil society would need to play more of an oversight and accountability role. But for now, those coalition partners are keeping each other in check rather than trying to tear the coalition apart from inside. All right. Well, I appreciate you speaking to me about this. Thank you so much for your time. The Third Republic Director, Paul Berkowitz, thank you for joining me this morning.